Yeah, um, good morning all. Um, I hope you had a good breakfast uh, before this, but I'm trying to keep this um, as interesting as Read possible. this chart from um, a press, um, a, in YouTube videos uh, that is actually titled um, Millennial Risings, and I think if you have the time, uh, go look for it. It has got some interesting observations and description about this group. But I will summarize um, basically the, uh, the top line, what the traits are. And we, we, we have actually heard people talk about this quite often. They are always on. They are on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, these are the people that I would say would have this symptom called atten attention titus because they, they, they are so, so um, bombarded by different type of medias and they are capable of uh, managing different things and uh, according attentions to different things. Um, there are also a group of people that um, has got technology really as a part of their DNA and this is a well-known fact. But on top of that, um, there's some other aspect of it that we, we should actually consider. For example, um, how technology therefore are making them uh, shop differently um, and how they're displaying multi-channel purchasing behavior. Um, I will also talk a little bit more about uh, how we have actually harnessed some of these um, learning and observations in the way we change our approach in uh, communications. Um, these are really highly connected shoppers. Now the things I also want to um, 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 put this point across, we may talk about generation wise as a different breed of people, but the fact is they are not really a niche a group of customers, they are the customers today now. And it's a mainstay of customers. And as organization, we really cannot ignore this group. And it, it has actually in a way changed um, the way organizations engage with customers. In some cases, business models are shifting and changing. And we're observing in not just uh, the new businesses coming up, but also in the brick and mortar businesses. So as highly con connected um, shoppers, what they tend to do is, is that they, they have the abilities um, to create contents. And really there has been uh, uh, saying that you know, uh, the power of the brand has actually no longer lies with uh, the brand, but it should be the consumer. People want to have a say um, in the brands that they buy. And these people rely very much on social media uh, to connect, to share, um, and also to make decisions. And particularly in the case of Singapore, where, where this, this is uh, even much uh, more prevalent group because um, we, are, we have got a very high penetration adoptions of um, um, mobile phones and handsets. Um, I also mentioned just now about power to the people and having um, people want to have a say in the brands that they buy in. And as brand, we, we need to be conscious to be able to have more transparencies. Um, they are skepticals about you know, what brand says uh, through mainstream advertising. And really the top-down, one-way propaganda style uh, communication really no longer work with this group of people. Um, they want to be able to uh, interact and they are the people who want to hear from the brand to be able to give feedback and also get responses from them. So I think this is the attention-seeking aspect of it. Right? Um, it was mentioned more than one time, really the new path to purchase uh, it's no longer a linear path. Um, before they make a decision to buy certain things, they always talk to, they are prepared to talk to strangers. They are prepared to share information to strangers. And I think the study has also shown that uh, in, in, in order to get information, they are prepared to volunteer information. There was a study by um, IMEA um, that is called Born This Way Millennia. Uh, you can actually look for it uh, online as well. Um, but they talk about research done across uh, three markets, US, Canada, and as well as uh, England. And they show that actually across different geog uh, geographic um, divides, these groups are very similar. In fact, I think the similarity cuts across um, all, all nations. Um, so it is actually applicable to us as well. This group of people um, value loyalties, all right? So, they, they will actually look for brands that they can, that will actually help to make life easier for them. Um, so very internet savvy and extremely good at finding great deals because they have access to all the informations and will not hesitate. You know, in the past, I was just talking to Louis um, on the ground just now. You know, in the past, uh, in our parents' generations, or even my sister's generations, I'm actually not that young, um, she, she will go to places like People's Park, you know, um, to look for best travel deals. And this is totally alien to me because 
I'm used to buying things online. I'm used to shopping, uh, booking my tickets and my travel deals online. Um, and and this, this is essentially what the new group of consumers are doing now. Uh, if this is where they're going to be finding information, making decisions, reading reviews, reading trip advisors, then, then brands has to be out there. We have to be where they are to provide and facilitate information rather than sell directly to them. Support Green. Um, I want to talk about this as well. Now, this group of people um, has been known um, or rather has been labored to have really a great sense of entitlement. Um, some may say they are in, in a way narcissistic in a certain way because they think um, themselves is more important. But interestingly, this is also a group of people that has been exposed to a lot of green messages um, growing up because that is the norm in the society that we're growing in. And therefore, a lot of people have actually indicated that you know, they are interested in dealing with brands that are conscious about the environments that support you know, green initiative. And this is something that we as brand must remember as well about this whole idea about practicing sustainable business model um, and its considerations in terms of the engagement with them. So it's no longer just what products and services we sell to them, but also how you practice as a company. Because a lot of things that we are doing, consumer may not have direct um, access or say to what we are planning to do, but they are observing from a distance and making decisions about whether this is the brand I want to buy into. And that, that explains brands like Body Shop, for example, you know, how they, they have actually got quite interesting following among the new group of our consumers. Right. Okay, maybe just a little bit about us before I talked about uh, some of the things that we do. Um, leveraging some of these observations. Um, fair price for some of the, the, the audience who are not here, who, are, who, who is not in Singapore or not familiar with Singapore. Uh, we have been around for 40 years and we were set up uh, first as a social enterprise to, with the social mission to regulate the, more, uh, the cost of living. And over the years we've expanded and we have now um, about 270 stores across the island, across different uh, retail formats. Um, so beyond the supermarket, there is the Gome, um, uh, stores. We've got hypermarket. We've got convenience stores. Uh, we have quite a following on the e-commerce as well, um, as well as um, petrol, petrol marks um, that's operated by ExxonMobil. Um, 